I'm uh, Eva Brems. Uh, I live in Leuven, that is in the Flemish part of Belgium in Europe. Um, I'm a law professor, a uh, professor of uh, human rights law. Now, you know, in a small country, it is quite common for people to wear multiple hats. So when you are a professor of human rights law, very often you will also be contacted by civil society organizations to take up functions there. And so I have done that a lot in the course uh, of my career. I have been uh, an activist and also a chair of uh, the Flemish section of Amnesty International, a board member of the Human Rights League, uh, Lawyers Without Frontiers, uh, a founder and chair of a human rights education organization. So one thing uh, leading to another. Um, relatively recently, until one year ago, I also did one term in uh, the federal parliament of Belgium as a, as a member of, uh, of parliament. Yeah, the, the major uh, human rights challenges in Belgium are comparable to those of, of several other European uh, states, uh, neighboring states amongst others. So, uh, of course, talking as, as we do today, uh, uh, early September 2015, uh, one has to start with mentioning uh, the issue of asylum and refugees, uh, the treatment uh, of people who apply uh, for refugee status, even the treatment of people who are already recognized uh, refugees is something that is uh, under discussion uh, today. Also other issues uh, related to immigration, uh, detention uh, of people in, in the process of uh, applying for uh, legal status, uh, integration of people living here, so discrimination issues in education, on the housing market, uh, on the labor market. Um, in a different sphere, uh, detention conditions remain uh, a constant uh, concern. And in particular, uh, Belgium has a, has a very bad record uh, with respect to the treatment of uh, people with a psychiatric condition who are uh, deprived of their liberty. Um, these are some of the main issues, in addition, of course, to those issues that are endemic almost everywhere around the world, such as domestic violence, in particular against women. That, of course, is also an issue uh, that remains a constant concern. And on the radar of some states, I'm thinking, for instance, of the U.S. State Department, Belgium will also have a, an orange uh, light at least when it comes to religious freedom or um, discrimination on grounds of religion. This is because this country, as, as, as many others uh, in the area, is suffering from, I would say, rather high degrees of Islamophobia, which have also uh, been linked, uh, although some would deny that link, to uh, laws uh, banning religious expression. I'm in particularly thinking of uh, the hijab in schools and and uh, in in public for public servants and uh, the law that uh, Belgium has adopted uh, as one of only two countries in the world banning uh, the full face veil uh, to be worn in public. Um, Equal rights for men and women um, partly remain uh, a challenge. Of course, we are in the part of the world where, yeah, it's say we're in, in, in the top uh, uh, tier in terms of what has uh, already been realized in terms of, of, of equal rights for men and women. In some places, there are gender quota, uh, there is strong anti-discrimination legislation. Uh, there's increasingly also public debate to address uh, sexist stereotypes, etc. Um, but of course, uh, nowhere in the world full equality, uh, full equality of opportunities or full equality in terms of, of, of outcomes uh, has actually been achieved. 
Um, and like many uh, feminists these days, I find it uh, sometimes discouraging to see that feminism, feminism itself is sort of out of vogue uh, increasingly. And uh, I find it a little bit frustrating thinking that we are so close to completing the job, you know, <laughs> we're almost there. And sort of the, yeah, the, the enthusiasm uh, is, is, is probably no longer there. Um, but that being said, I mean, women's movements remain active in Belgium. And uh, it is probably true that other uh, groups, um, I'm thinking in particular of, of uh, ethnic and cultural uh, minorities in our country, deserve uh, to come in the first place in terms of uh, emancipation policies and uh, policies on equal opportunities. It's interesting to see that after we've had uh, the bans on the full face veil, the bans on hijab in, in many places, we've now, we're, yeah, we're now having the debate on religious slaughter. So uh, here, animal welfare and animal rights and welfare activists uh, are uh, opposed to uh, people claiming religious exemptions. Um, I think uh, part of this, it, it, it's, it's a complex thing, eh? because for many people, uh, many people who oppose religious slaughter and who want this ban only care about animal welfare and have no other afterthoughts. But it is clear, I think, to many observers of this debate that one of the reasons why it, it is so popular with, with politicians to strive for this is that it is one more case in which a politician can say, let's not give any special treatment to Muslims. Uh, so that it is uh, playing into a certain anti-Islam uh, sentiment that is that is quite popular in this uh, part of Europe uh, for the moment. Um, I still think that it that it will not carry through a full ban on religious slaughter because, of course, this affects uh, not only uh, the Muslim population. In fact. Uh, exemptions for religious slaughter predate the arrival of, of Muslim immigrants uh, in our country and neighboring countries and, and were of course introduced introduced for, for the Jewish uh, population. And, and it, it would be uh, constitutionally very difficult to have an exemption for one group and, and not for another, even though the numbers of animals we're talking about are, are much uh, lower when we talk about the Jewish population. Um, and you asked me, I think the main challenge today in Belgium and in many other European countries is a challenge of, of human rights education. Uh, we make human rights the fundamental values of our society. In theory, they are the values that should steer all government behavior, increasingly also private behavior if you look at anti-discrimination law. Uh, etc. But if you look at the debate in the media and elsewhere, public debate, it is increasingly clear that in those cases where the rights are probably most needed, when we're talking about the most vulnerable and marginalized uh, people, they may not always enjoy the support of the majority of, of the population. So a system based on human rights works only if we keep making sure that these values remain entrenched in uh, the population in general, in the younger generations. Uh, so increasingly, I think uh, this is this is the real challenge. Are these still uh, our values? Do we want them to remain uh, our values? Then we should teach them, we should sensitize people and, and keep uh, raising awareness and, and yeah, try to find a way to counter populism, to counter uh, superficial, even, even yeah, empirically false <laughs> accounts that, that, uh, that, that may be very tempting uh, to people, very comforting to people, making them feel it's okay to care mostly about your own uh, material comfort and, and, and not so much about other things. But that, in fact, uh, 
threaten something that that yeah we've considered as as the basis of our uh, democracy and and our rule of law of law so um yeah i think we should not take human rights for granted uh even in a country like belgium